I'm Dr. Matthew Malowski, and I'm an associate professor in the uh, Department of Medicine and Division of Hematology Oncology, and the section chief of the Genital Urinary Oncology Service at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center. Today, I'm going to talk to you about kidney cancer. The kidneys are organs that are involved in the filtering of the blood to remove toxins uh, from the body into the urine. Kidney cancer arises within the substance of the kidney, uh, referred to as the parenchyma of the kidney. Kidney tumors occur in approximately 65,000 individuals in the United States each year. They occur more commonly in whites as compared to blacks. The main risk factors for kidney cancer include elevated blood pressure, smoking, obesity, chronic kidney disease, chronic cystic disease of the kidneys, and about 2% of kidney tumors arise due to an inherited genetic syndrome. Kidney cancer is not simply one disease. There are many different types of kidney tumors. The most common type of kidney tumor is called clear cell kidney cancer. The second most common type is called papillary kidney cancer. And several less, less common types include chromophobe, oncocytoma, collecting duct carcinoma, and medullary kidney cancer. Historically, kidney cancer was diagnosed by a triad, blood in the urine, pain in the abdomen area, as well as a palpable mass by the physician. But with the increased use of imaging studies, we've been diagnosing kidney cancers much earlier. And so that triad is only found currently in less than 10% of patients who present with kidney cancer. So due to the increased use of um, imaging studies, kidney cancer is being diagnosed at an earlier stage of disease. In fact, we're picking up many small lesions within the kidneys, what we often refer to as incidental tumors or even incidentalomas, uh, that can simply be watched over time and don't necessarily require any type of intervention. So kidney cancer is staged uh, with the use of uh, imaging studies. Uh, we generally use a CAT scan with contrast or an MRI in those patients who have underlying kidney dysfunction or kidneys that are not functioning properly. We will use an MR to avoid the use of the contrast with the CAT scan. The staging system for kidney cancer uses the TNM classification. T stands for tumor, N for node, and M for metastases. Stage one disease includes tumors that are less than or equal to seven centimeters. Stage two disease includes tumors that are greater than seven centimeters. Stage three disease involves tumors that are more invasive within the kidney or have evidence of local lymph nodes that are involved by cancer. And stage four disease involves the invasion of the tumor through an area referred to as Gerota's fascia, which surrounds the kidney, or if there is evidence of distant metastatic spread of the cancer. So the, um, so the staging is, is crucial in understanding how to treat the kidney cancer. And in smaller tumors, or tumors that are localized to the kidney, the treatment is generally surgery. And that surgery can come in different forms. The removal of the kidney completely is referred to as a radical nephrectomy. Removal of part of the kidney is referred to as a partial nephrectomy. And patients with tumors that are localized to the kidney can also be used, treated with non-surgical approaches such as freezing of the tumor with cryotherapy or applying radiofrequency ablation to the area of the tumor. And as I mentioned earlier, there may be some very small kidney lesions that we can simply follow with imaging over time and don't necessarily need to intervene.
more advanced lesions within the kidney may still be treated with surgery. However, there is often a team of physicians that may be involved in those type of surgical procedures. Not only the urologist who's removing the kidney, but some patients can actually have tumor, referred to as tumor thrombus, that it can extend up into the major veins and even go into the heart. Under those circumstances, a vascular surgeon or cardiothoracic surgeon may also be involved in the surgery with the urologist. So for, again, for tumors that involve the kidney or extend into local lymph nodes, the treatment is generally surgery, and that includes stage one, two, and three disease. For patients with more advanced disease that have spread outside of the area of the kidney, we generally use a total body type of approach to the management, including drugs, as well as the use of surgery under certain circumstances. The use of surgery in the setting of patients with advanced kidney cancer that's spread outside of the area of the kidney is quite unique. There's actually information to suggest that removing the kidney in the setting of patients who have distant spread of the disease to other parts of the body, for example, lung or bone, can actually lead to an improvement in outcome and survival in those patients. This type of procedure is referred to as a cytoreductive nephrectomy, that is removal of the kidney in the setting of advanced disease. The management of kidney cancer that has spread outside of the area of the kidney was traditionally managed with therapies that were referred to as immunologic or cytokine-based therapies with two agents in particular, interferon and interleukin-2. Since 2004, it's been extraordinarily exciting with the development of multiple novel therapies to treat kidney cancer. These particular therapies target specific molecular events that occur within the cancer cell. Kidney cancer is very unique in that it has a very important blood supply. And much like many other tumors, kidney cancer is really the poster child for the development of therapies that target the blood supply of tumors. Although we still consider the use of some of these immunologic or cytokine-based therapies like interferon or interleukin-2, there have been seven FDA-approved agents for the management of patients with advanced kidney cancer. Several of these drugs, bevacizumab, sunitinib, pazopinib, axitinib, target the blood supply of tumors. And this, led to, this has led to significant improvements in the outcome and survival of patients with this disease. In addition, there are several agents that target a particular molecular pathway within the cancer cell, referred to as mTOR. These agents are Averolimus and Temsirolimus, and all of these have now become part of the armamentarium uh, in the management of patients with advanced kidney cancer. Although we don't have a curative therapy for the majority of patients with kidney cancer that has spread outside of the area of the kidney, there are certainly circumstances whereby, whereby patients can achieve a cure either through surgery, that is removal of some of these metastatic lesions, and there is a subset of patients that are treated with high-dose interleukin-2 that can also be cured with advanced kidney cancer. The challenges now involve how we use these agents, either together or sequentially, that is one after the other, with the incorporation of other novel therapies to ultimately achieve that elusive goal, which is cure. We may not be able to cure this disease, but with these therapies, we may be able to convert this disease, and I believe we already are, into more of a chronic disease. Like for a patient with diabetes, who may start out with simply problems managing their blood sugar and ultimately may require additional therapies and even develop complications down the road as related to their nerves or their kidneys, or for that matter, heart disease, where a patient may start out by having a heart attack and ultimately end up with the need for medications to support how well their heart pumps. And so I think as we develop additional therapies in this disease and we learn how to better use these therapies, we will continue to drive this disease into more of a chronic illness uh, and hopefully one day achieve the elusive goal of cure. So these drugs have really revolutionized the treatment of advanced kidney cancer. 
It was clinical trials that actually made this possible and the participation of patients in these clinical trials that ultimately led to the FDA approval of these drugs, many of which are oral agents, unlike the intravenous or injection type therapies that we had in the past. Although they have different side effects and toxicity as compared to some of the standard therapies that we've used in the past, we as medical oncologists have become more familiar with dealing with these agents and more familiar with understanding the side effect profiles and exactly how to manage them in patients. It's been an extraordinarily exciting time in the management of kidney cancer and this has become again in large part related to the fact that patients have participated in clinical trials that have led to the advances that we see today. Your care team now is typically composed of not only the medical oncologist, but of course the urologist who may be involved in performing a cytoreductive nephrectomy, that is in the setting of advanced disease. And of course additional services as well, such as nursing support and social work services and many other ancillary support services uh, that has made the experience uh, much different for patients today as compared to years ago. There may be a role for radiation therapy as well in your disease in the event that the disease has spread to a particular area that may be causing symptoms, for example, bone, for which radiation therapy may be extremely helpful. And so under these circumstances, the radiation oncologist may also become an important member of your care team. An important point to understand when you're diagnosed with kidney cancer or cancer in general is that once you're treated for your kidney cancer, that is not the end. You need to be followed over time, typically by your medical oncologist, perhaps by your surgeon or even radiation oncologist, depending upon your treatment plan, for years, both to look for recurrence of the disease as well as to look for a new kidney cancer or another type of cancer that may be related to the original cancer that you were diagnosed with. So what are the questions that you should have for your doctor when it comes to being diagnosed with kidney cancer? Well, there are several. The first is, what type of kidney cancer do I have? As you recall, I mentioned that kidney cancer is simply not one disease, and there are many different forms of kidney cancer. Again, the majority being the clear cell variant of kidney cancer, but several others as well. This has implications with regard to treatment, as well as the risk of spread and the overall prognosis. You should ask your physician about the stage of your cancer. Is the cancer localized or is it spread outside of the area of the kidney? This has major implications with regard to treatment. Will I need surgery? Will I need additional therapy in the way of some of these novel targeted type drugs that I mentioned? And who is gonna be part of your treatment team? Is it going to be the urologist, medical oncologist? Will the radiation oncologist be involved? What will be the follow-up plan once I'm treated for my kidney cancer? In patients with advanced disease, what are the toxicities and side effects associated with the therapy that your doctor recommends? In the event that the disease doesn't respond well to the initial therapy that you receive, what is your doctor thinking in terms of the next therapy and subsequent therapies that you may be eligible for? And finally, I think it's extremely important to ask questions related to clinical trials. Is there a clinical trial that may be available for me now or at some point down the road? The diagnosis of cancer, in particular kidney cancer, can be extremely overwhelming. Uh, you must remember that you have a caring team composed of physicians, nurses, social workers, and other ancillary support services to help you through this journey. In addition, Guidepost of Strength can provide mentors for you to take you through this journey and support you along the way.